Okay, this is uh, one of the aquaculture videos on, uh, well, we've gone through most of the nuts and bolts of aquaculture and its relation to fisheries management. Now we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of aquaculture. Uh, the advantages will be covered in this vid and the next video will cover the disadvantages. Um, so one of the global benefits, we're talking about big picture benefits, is uh, protein production. So we saw that um, graph with the, the shortfall of uh, um, seafood demand expected, and this could possibly help. Uh, employment opportunities. So those people that are coming into the world will need jobs. Um, it's a good way to provide incomes for people is if you can... Um, create aquaculture industry, take advantage of the coastline. Um, supplementation of wild stocks. So uh, as we talked about with the scallop enhancement, then you can, um, and with the, also with the, the trout fishery, of course, you can rear um, wild young stock and then place them into the environment for uh, sport fishermen or commercial fishermen to uh, take advantage of an enhanced stock. Um, ornamental species, so the aquarium industry and educational exhibits like Kelly Tarleton's can um, help with people becoming more aware of the marine environment by uh, showing them um, the beauty of it through aquariums, but also there are many places in the world where uh, coral reefs and other uh, habitats are becoming um, bereft of the pretty fish because uh, there's another type of commercial fishing which is hand gathering for the aquarium industry where people go out and gather the little Nemos and the like and um, then bag them up, air freight them around the world where they wind up in uh, hobbyist fish tanks at pet stores. Okay, so human health, um, omega-3s, we all know that uh, we need to have omega-3 uh, oils and other um, micronutrients. Uh, seaweeds are great for that, uh, and if we can include those in our, uh, in our diet, then we can possibly have healthier human population. Pharmaceuticals, drugs, sunblock, anti-fouling, so... Um, uh, I think you will hear about in invertebrate biology uh, how sponges are being used um, to fight certain cancers like uh, breast cancer. Uh, there are some compounds that are taken from sponges. Uh, sunblock, there's no commercial sunblock that you can get right now that doesn't um, cause, that isn't carcinogenic. So all of the uh, the stuff that you normally put on to prevent cancer is actually uh, a cancer-causing agent. Um, and anti-fouling, of course, if we can get things that will uh, prevent growth on the bottom of boats, then we wouldn't have to use all of that uh, heavy toxic copper paint on the bottom of boats. So there are um, possibilities that could come out of aquaculture uh, from compounds that we could um, harvest out of these, these organisms. So those are the global advantages, but what about for an individual? So if an individual uh, on, on a small scale is going to go into aquaculture, they might have um, exclusive ownership of, the, um, of that stock, and that gives them an advantage over um, the old tragedy of the commons type um, model that is seen with uh, publicly owned stocks that are in the wild. Potentially lower costs, it may cost a lot less to harvest the fish, uh, not necessarily, but it may cost a lot less to harvest fish um, through uh, aquaculturing pens and the like than it does to drive a, a boat all over the uh, ocean trying to find um, find those fish. Especially with something like um, crayfish, unfortunately they take seven years to get to a legal size, so that's a long time to hold a, uh, a stock. But uh, there's a lot of fuel input in into catching a single crayfish. 
efficient harvesting process. Um, so you can harvest uh, just when the market demands the fish. So you har mark you and you use the only the resources that you need. You don't catch any more than you have orders for or less than you have orders for. Uh, consistent product and quality. So if that means that if um, restaurants want a very consistent one kilogram fillet that they can cut into two pieces and, um, and have exactly two portions from each fillet, then they'll pay a premium for that because they get no wastage. They know exactly what they're going to get and uh, that product product is harvested, d put on ice straight away, and um, arrives at the uh, consumer's door in great nick. Genetics. So we, as we saw in the first video, you can use uh, genetics to selectively um, improve your um, output and the characteristics of the stock that you're harvesting. So that's selective breeding or possibly even um, uh, genetically modification, genetic modification. So they're very large potential markets as well. There's no uh, shortage of demand for seafood. So this isn't a, an industry that um, where you're going to create this product and then find that there's nobody that wants to buy it. There is an endless demand for seafood. And uh, little or no bycatch. So and, uh, as we've seen in a lot of other fisheries, there is uh, a big problem with bycatch uh, or impacting the uh, habitat, such as uh, bottom trawling. So if you can avoid uh, impacting the wider habitat and uh, other species that you're not targeting, then uh, that's a good thing. So potentially, uh, you can have sustainable um, production of, uh, of seafood through aquaculture, whereas uh, wild-caught fisheries, there's a limit to how much production you can, you can have.